What's up? This is Tiny Love. We're gonna have a little interview right now with the legendary Cosmo D, Cosmo D from outer space. He <laughs> finally came to uh, us, the human race. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? What's, what's up? up? Um, so, uh, just uh, can you tell us some history on uh, how you started and um, you know, taking take us from there, like oh, back in the days. I started. 75, I'm, I'm, I'm at John Dewey High School, that's down in Coney Island. Oh, wow. That's where I, where I went to high school. I, 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 was, I was hanging out with the super seniors mm. outside the school, drinking, drinking Brass Monkey and smoking herb. Oh, wow, nice. nice. <laughs> and somebody popped the tape into a box. Spring of 75, I will never forget it. Popped the tape into a box. And it had it, it, the, the the first thing they played was somebody cutting up the the break mm. of of a record called Bra by Samandi. Oh wow! And they just going back and forth, and you know, and I, I was always into music, so I knew the song, mm -hmm. but I had never heard a break extended like that ever. Never heard anything like that. Mm -hmm. And it turned out the name of the DJ was Count J C. He was a big DJ down in Coney Island. Oh yeah. And um, I heard that, and I decided right then and there I wanted to be a DJ. Mm -hmm. By the by, uh, right about that same time, my boys, and so, uh, a couple friends of mine had DJ equipment, so I'd get on theirs. Mm -hmm. But the next year, me, my cousins, um, Neek, she, she, she took the name Neeky D, and Pete, he took the name Master Quadro, we got equipment and we started DJing. Mm -hmm. And the following summer, Neek had to go to college, so I brought my best friend in, David St. Louis, he, he went by Dr. Freeze, and we started a crew we called Jam On Productions. That was in the in the summer of '77, and we started getting equipment, you know, putting it together. Started first rocking small parks and block parties. Like but what parks? What parks? Um, what park. Well, I lived in Park Slope, Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and my cousins lived with my grandparents in Bed Stuy, Brooklyn. So we were like in both areas. You know, the equipment stayed in Bed Stuy, mm. but you know, anything go on in Park Slope, we do it. And and the parks we first started hitting. Like old nine park, 137. We always hit 137. That was over in Bainbridge. Um, 282 park. We eventually started hitting, but um, that's when we started out. Mm -hmm. By by the following year, we had enough equipment that we were rocking serious. And um, PS40 park, um, Halsey park, um, a few parks. I don't even know the names. Nice. You know, they were, they were area parks, Marion Street Park. Now, I'm sure that's not the name of it, but that's that's where we hit. <laughs> so how, how used to rock a park? like? Um... Well, what, what would happen, or, or, you know, sometimes, you know, we just set up and, and jam, you know. But what would often happen is somebody would already be set up at the park. And we'd come and we'd set up on the other side of the park, you know, and, 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 and jam. We You know, you'd had... Um, sound reinforcement speakers oh. you know and you, oh. you pile them up and at, when we first started we had a couple of other crews that we worked with it was um um what was k's crew uh uh unlimited sound mm. unlimited sound and another another friend of mine that went to school with me that went to do it with me, mm -hmm. DJ Humidity, mm -hmm. and we would all gather together, line up, swing, join forces, and battle. You Get know? out of here. We would battle other crews, yeah. Wow. You know, so we started doing that in earnest in 77. By 79, that was the peak. You know, mm -hmm. we had we had folded horns by then. Um, most people ain't going to know what folded horns are, but basically they're large bass bottoms where the, the, the speakers, you don't see the speakers, they're inside the bass bottoms oh, and, they're, and they're vibrating off of the wood and it, it impacts the bass. Wow. You know, so so um, the, you guys had like the major, major sound back yeah, then. Yeah, no, we had we had major sound. I mean, we weren't the disco twins rocking Richard Long, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. or Infinity Machine or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But for a neighborhood crew, we had, we had a nice sound system. Wow. You know, and we, and we, we, would, we would be rocking fools, man. Get out of here. Wow. Yeah. 
So I mean, uh, so that means in Brooklyn there used to be big, big time parties, big time block parties, and uh, big, big. Um, those but by big the summer history, of 1979. Uh huh. In the summer of 1979, there was somebody jamming somewhere every night in the summer. Oh wow! Every, every single night. night. Wow. Somebody was jamming somewhere. That's how. That's how big it got. You know, it, when we started in '77, and we, you know, there were there were there were a few crews, but there weren't that many. You know, and and the crews that did come out were were usually huge. Um, Fantasia, Nutcracker, Nutcracker wasn't huge, but he was big in our area. Um, electrified sounds, flowers. You know, these are the main crews that would come out. But by '79, when we when we were peaking, there were a lot of other crews as well. You know, um, other crews in our neighborhood. Um, Barrington's crew was something city. I don't remember what it was. Didn't matter. We used to blow him out every time. Wow. But uh, his crew, um, System One Two Three. We used to call them. We used to call them System One Two Three speakers. Wow. <laughs> we used to blow them out every time. Wow. Too. But um, yeah, man, it was a, by 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 '79. You came out in the summertime. Somebody was jamming somewhere. Wow. No matter what. So um, also like, can you can you tell me like um, history on uh, hip hop in Brooklyn, like, cause not too many talk about that, and you know, just take me there. Just well, tell in '77, that's when that's when hip hop, the the Bronx style, the Bronx brand of hip hop, mm -hmm. really hit Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Now. I'm, you know, and a lot of the Bronx cats be hating on me for this, but um, I consider hip hop different than it. I'm not breaking it down to four elements. For one thing, you, how you break a culture down to four elements. Mm -hmm. And if I was to break it down to, 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 to the four top elements, it wouldn't be the elements that they talking about. You know, because we used to rap graffiti, and we used to we used to jam in the parks, and we and we used to rap on the mics, and we never connected the graffiti with the jamming on the parks and rapping on the mics. Mm -hmm. You know, it's later on somebody looked back and said, "Oh yeah, that's hip hop too." You know, mm -hmm. so um, far as I'm concerned, hip hop was rocking in the parks. You know, getting people in the parks and battling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, hip hop is a battle mentality. You know, and, and, and mind you, the battles never escalated into fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just about being up. You know, and in that way, graffiti and, 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 and hip-hop is very similar. I guess that's why they connected, because graffiti back then was about being up. Mm. I mean, you had mad respect for somebody who could do a dope burner, but the main thing was you wanted to be up. You wanted to be all lines, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so... Even even suckers that you know people say, well, he, he you know he can't write, you know his style is whack, but he up, you know, mm -hmm. you know they got respect because they were up all city, you know. Yeah, yeah. But um, hip hop to me was was alive and well in Brooklyn long before the Bronx style came to Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. But the Bronx style definitely changed things up. Yeah, yeah. Three things came from the Bronx: rapping on the mic. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about now because because when, when before I started, you know, there were MCs who got on the mic and they had like, like slogans and chants mm -hmm. and stuff like this. I got a group gonna make you move. Come on, you know, and they would just do that all night. Mm -hmm. You know, we you know, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, different slogans and different chants, mm -hmm. but actual rhymes where somebody had like a book of rhymes and all that that came down from the Bronx at least as far as I know because mm -hmm. I know I saw it first in the Bronx mm -hmm. scratching mm -hmm. now I'm not talking about cutting mm -hmm. because cutting everybody cut you, you couldn't DJ without cut because in order to line up the beat you had to cut mm -hmm. in your headphones mm -hmm. so cutting you know like I said I heard Cal JC cutting in 1975 but scratching I first saw in the Bronx that came down yeah. and the freak the dance, the freak, and that's what really changed everything. Mm -hmm. That I saw first come down from the Bronx, mm -hmm. you know, because what because of the freak, which was a slower dance, a lot of the cats who were playing a lot of disco had to stop playing disco, mm -hmm. you know, and and a lot of the music that people were playing slowed down, mm -hmm. you know, and that changed things, and I think that's why the rap styles came out the way they did. Because if they were rapping the faster beats, much faster beats, 
it would be completely different. Right. You know, so I I, I, I I root everything to the freak. Mm -hmm. You know, because the dance and chants change everything. Because the main thing is you partying, you know, guys are partying to meet females. Exactly. Females are partying to meet, meet dudes. And yeah. what they want is they want to dance. You know, and that's another thing that was different about the Bronx jams from many of the the the, uh, the Brooklyn jams. Yeah. You know, the Brooklyn jams is about party. So, yeah. it, it it wasn't rappers all night long. Mm -hmm. You know, there would be sections for rappers, there would be sections for breakers, but the main thing was to keep the party going. Because yeah. if you didn't keep the party going, people in the crowd would get upset. Yeah. And let me tell you something, in the 70s in Brooklyn, you didn't want the people getting upset. <laughs> You know, you had to keep people happy. You know, we used to brag or jam on because a lot of other crews got their jam shot up. Mm, you know, because mm. they be playing whack shit, you mm, know? And mm -hmm. People, you know, they get bored. Mm -hmm. They get bored, they gonna find something else to do. Mm. You know, let's make people run and fire up in the air and mm. shit like that, you know? But um, we never, never got any, any shooting in any of our jams. Mm. You know, because we kept the party jumping. We nice. kept the people rocking, nice. you know? and. To do that, you had to play more funky music, and yes, you had to play some disco. Mm. You know, love is the message. MFSB, that's a Brooklyn national anthem. Oh, you know, wow. you had to play that song. Nice. You know, and now nice. I, I, I'm not gonna say that he didn't play it in the Bronx, mm -hmm. but um, they talking about in the Bronx. All y'all played in Brooklyn was disco, mm -hmm. but that was disco. Mm -hmm. And you had to play that. But you know what? Good times was disco too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yes. You know? Yes. And people rapped over good times and they rapped over oh. Love is the Message. So, well, I want to ask you, like, um, did you uh, play in uh, Bushwick? Did you ever play in Bushwick? Or? Yeah, we, we, we did Bushwick Park. And, and then. Um, uh, right behind Bushwick High School. Oh, that yeah. Park over there? Yeah, we nice. did that. And then, uh, like, in the, in the times, you, you, did you see rock dance, up rock back then? I, we, <laughs> um, Al T, mm. his name back in the, back then was MC Harmony. Oh yeah. Yeah, mm. but he, but um, now it's Al T, Al T McLaren. He was he was A um, and R up at Warlock Records in the in the in the um, 80s, back when Warlock was was kicking it. Mm. He he was an up rocker back then. When, when, oh yeah. In our crew, yeah. Get um, out of here! Yeah, wow. Man, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the crew he was with. He used to wear his colors. He used to get in trouble all the time because yeah. he was wearing his colors. <laughs> he had his jacket on. Um, we were down with um, I don't know I don't know if you know um, Seven DS, Seven Deadly Sins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I yeah heard that, of those are my boys from Park Slope. Why? Yeah, man. No, no, no. We were down with them. Um, 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 floor Masters. Mm, nice. You know, um, nice. you know, um, you know, you know. Cats that are known for up rocking, like Ink 76, also known for graffiti yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah, 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 he yeah. used to chill in my house all the time. Get man. Back, here. back when I lived wow. on Lincoln Place. Yeah. Wow, nice. Yeah, Ink 76. Small, small um, world. Um, <laughs> damn, yeah, what was his name? BYB. Uh, oh, shit. Wow, that's See, dope. I'm getting old, man. I'm getting Don't worry old, about it. Don't worry about it. It's good. It's good. But, um,. See, it's gonna come to me, but that's all right. So, so can, can you tell me about like, uh, uh, yeah, I, I wanted you to talk about Grandmaster Flowers and uh, yeah, some of those DJs, Brooklyn DJs. Give me uh, some history. Tell me about them, you know, because I, I want to know a lot about them. You know? As far as I'm concerned, there were two legends. Now, I'm biased. Mm -hmm. First of all, I've got a healthy battle mentality. Mm. So I don't look up to very many. Yeah. I look down on a lot. <laughs> you know, I, my, my, my thing was, I didn't care who you were, I'll, I'll line up against you across on the other side of the park and blow you out. Mm. You know, when, when, when my homeboys would come, come from, from jams uptown and tell me about Grandmaster Flash, oh man, he scratches with his nose and with his elbows and all, I said, oh, let him go ahead and do that and I'll just put on a, a dope record and blow his ass out. You know, because that, that was my mentality. But there were a couple of DJs I looked up to. Mm -hmm. And the two I looked up to most, both for their ability mm -hmm. and then for their systems, was App. He had a crew called Electrified Sounds. Mm -hmm. And as far as I'm concerned, he was the dopest. Wow. His was the dopest in Brooklyn. Wow. And 
Grandmaster Flowers. 